Hey, what's going on YouTube? Coming at you with another video here. Today we're we'll talking about uh, opportunities in commercial nuclear power, specifically the senior reactor operator position. I just went through the interview process and was selected for that position at a uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, so this information largely comes from talking to prior SROs during the hiring process and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission website. So the general structure of a uh, crew at a nuclear power plant is comprised of three different types of operators. First, you have your auxiliary or non-licensed operator. Uh, these are individuals that are going to be out on the plant. They're operating valves, starting and stopping pumps, and inspecting uh, running machinery for proper indication. Then you have your reactor operator, who is a licensed individual and uh, is responsible for controlling reactor power via control rods, uh, maintaining system temperature and pressure control, as well as core cooling. Uh, and finally, you have your senior reactor operator, who's responsible for supervising uh, the overall safe operation of the plant during the shift. Uh, they're going to be the ones that are ensuring uh, procedural compliance for any evolution, uh, also approving any maintenance or tag outs that are going to affect the plant, as well as uh, directing any kind of casualty response that may be required during the shift. All right, so now I've described the senior reactor operator position. Just want to go over some of the uh, pros and cons of that position. So starting off with the pros, it's a great paying job. Uh, generally, licensed operators can make over $10,000 a year when you count for bonuses and overtime. It's also good job security. There's always a demand for electricity. Uh, you do get more days off than your typical nine to five Monday through Friday job. Uh, and then it's also highly valuable experience and it's a good path to promotion within the nuclear industry. In terms of cons, uh, it is rotating shift work, so how I've seen it is three, uh, it's a three on, three off, four on, four off kind of schedule. Uh, that'll be your first two weeks on day shift, and then you'll rotate to a mid shift, uh, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and then 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. on the mid shift, uh, and then you'll have uh, a final training week to complete the cycle. Uh, additionally, there are longer hours, so 12 hour shifts, uh, and then also the location can be, a, can be a negative depending on what you're looking for. Uh, a lot of plants are in rural areas or they're at least outside, uh, 30 to 45 minutes outside of any major city center. All right, so now I want to go over the uh, requirements to apply to a director SRO position. Uh, so the actual requirements may vary based on the company, but the minimum requirements are per the uh, NRC. Uh, generally, uh, it falls into uh, three different cases. Uh, case one being you're a reactor operator, a uh, licensed reactor operator at a commercial plant, in which case you probably already know the requirements, uh, but you'll just end up upgrading to a direct SRO. Uh, case two is your prior military. Uh, specifically, you have to be in a position that operated control rods or directed the operation of control rods, uh, that being a reactor operator and drops a watch or Android supervisor qualified for 18 months. And then case three is you have a bachelor's degree, uh, in which case you will need 18 months of uh, site experience at a comparable power plant, that being a boiling water reactor or a uh, pressurized water reactor, uh, 27 months at a non-comparable facility or power plant, and then you'll need 36 months if you do not have an engineering degree. Uh, additionally, there's uh, some site familiarization activities that have to be completed before you can class up. And uh, this used to be a, a hard six month requirement, but uh, talking with the company that I'm working for, it's no longer the uh, hard six month requirement. All right, and finally, I wanna cover the uh, qualification timeline and licensing exam. So generally the qualification timeline is uh, 18 months, and this includes a classroom portion on fundamental reactor theory and plant systems. Then you have a um, portion where we'll be uh, performing evolutions in the plant, uh, also standing under structured watches. And then you also have a simulator portion uh, where you'll learn casualty recognition and response. You'll then move on to your licensing exam, which consists of three portions. Uh, so you have a written exam of 100 questions. Then you'll uh, have a simulator portion, and this will be where you'll have to demonstrate your command and control, your casualty recognition, and your casualty response. Uh, and then finally, you'll have your task-based uh, performance evaluation, and this can be anything such as uh, being given a maintenance item, having to validate the work controls and the, understand the effect on the uh, plant. So if you guys found this video useful, uh, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more information. Cheers, guys.